Here we're going to be talking about ischemic strokes and some of the labs that you're going to be seeing physicians order when a patient presents with an ischemic stroke. So first of all, what is an ischemic stroke? So according to the American Stroke Association, an ischemic stroke occurs as a result of an obstruction within a blood vessel supplying blood to the brain, and it actually accounts for 87% of all strokes. Hemorrhagic stroke occurs when a weakened blood vessel ruptures. So there's two kinds of strokes. They do get treated differently while they do present the same. The only way you know the difference is by getting a CT or an MRI. And we've got to initially figure out which kind of stroke it is so we know the appropriate way to treat it. So we're going to be talking about some of the labs that are specific to an ischemic stroke rather than a hemorrhagic stroke. Some of those labs include a glucose, a CMP, or also a BMP, a complete metabolic panel or a basic metabolic panel, lipid panel, a CBC, and PT, INR, and PTT. All right, so the first one I wanna talk about is glucose. So this is really essential to know right away because hypoglycemia, so hypo, Glycemia, so blood sugar less than 70, can mimic the symptoms of a stroke. So it's really essential that we differentiate, is this person having a hypoglycemic episode or are they truly having a stroke? Because if they're having this hypoglycemic episode, basically we just got to get them some sugar, some D50, and that's it, as opposed to all of this stroke protocol stuff. So. If a patient is presenting to the emergency department, the glucose is going to be part of the CMP or BMP, but if the patient is up on the unit, the first thing you want to do before enacting the stroke protocol is to check a finger stick glucose. So that's one of that's the most essential lab. All right, so now I'm going to talk about the CMP complete metabolic panel or basic metabolic panel. The basic just has a as a obviously sounds like just some less labs, but I'm going to go into de detail on a couple of the labs within the CMP. The first one that I want to talk about is the sodium. Sodium is, the normal sodium is 135 to 145, so that's normal. If we're less, less than 135, we're considered hyponatremic, so we've got low sodium. Low sodium can increase cerebral edema. So if someone is having a stroke, there's already edema associated with it. And if they have low, low sodium, it's just going to make it worse. So it's really important for us to assess what their sodium status is to see if they need a little bit of extra sodium while this disease process is occurring. So that's really essential. You'll find that neurologists and neurosurgeons look at the sodium level similarly to a cardiologist or a cardiovascular surgeon looks at the potassium value. They really want to know when a patient comes in with compromised, something's going on with their brain, they got to know their sodium. Next one is the BUN and creatinine. So these assess the kidney function. And so a normal BUN is, is 8 to 21. Okay, and a normal creatinine is 0 0.5 to 1.2. So it's really important to know this baseline kidney function because it, at some point during this patient's stay, if they're presenting with stroke symptoms, while the first step is to get a CT, we also at some point will probably get a CT with contrast or an MRI with contrast where we're going to be giving them medication or the contrast, I guess, that is really hard on their kidneys. So we really got to assess where they are baseline. And another condition that typically goes hand in hand with stroke is diabetes. And if someone has long-standing diabetes, treated or not, they can have compromised kidneys. So we really have to know what their kidney status is. The next thing that comes on the metabolic panel are the liver enzymes. We really have to assess their liver enzymes. There's quite a few that come on this. So these, these are the various labs that assess the liver. So we've got the albumin, 
we've got the ALP, the ALT, the AST, still going. We've got the Billy Ribbon. Oh. Billy Ribbon and the protein. So all of those are coming on this CMP and the essential thing to do is assess whether or not they're abnormal and elevated. Because patients that present with a stroke will most likely be started on a statin medication. So what is a statin and why do we need it? A statin blocks a substance that the body needs to make cholesterol and it also helps reabsorb built up cholesterol plaques on vessel walls. Current research shows that statins reduce the risk of stroke up to 25%. Now while there's not a clear association between cholesterol in all cases of stroke, it does show to decrease incidence. But the trade-off is that these are pretty hard on your liver. So if someone already has compromised liver function before they're getting started on a statin, that's gonna be something where the physician has to make a judgment call, is the benefit of the statin outweighing what's going on with their, their liver. So we wanna get a baseline and see how their liver's doing. So the next thing that kind of goes into that is the lipid panel. Okay, if they've presented with a stroke, how bad is their cholesterol in the first place? So on your lipid panel, there are a few there's a few different things that we're assessing. We're assessing the HDL, which is the um, high density lipoproteins. And I like to call these the happy ones. I call them this because you want the HDL level to be high. So, so greater than 60 is what we want for our HDLs. Now we have the LDLs, which is the low density, and I call these the losers, because <laughs> we want these to be low. So we do less, they're less than 100. So HDLs are happy and greater than 60. So you're happy when you're greater than 60, and the losers, um, the LDL, less than 100. The next one is the triglycerides. Those we want uh, less than 150. Uh, oh, that looks like 1150, doesn't it? Less than 150, there we go. And then total cholesterol, we want less than 200. So that's our lipid panel. So we've, you know, we've got to have a starting point. The next thing that we'll assess is a complete blood count. Now, while all the values on here are very specific and very helpful, one in particular that I want to talk about is the platelets. So platelets, normal platelets, 150,000 to 450,000. But really, you know, when you're talking about it, you're going to say 150 to 450. We don't, we don't really, in clinical setting, say those last numbers. So 150 to 450 is normal. So when someone presents with an ischemic stroke, one of the uh, first things that we want to do is rule out, well, other than once we figure out we've got an ischemic stroke on our hands and not a hemorrhagic stroke, we want to figure out, can we give them TPA? So the, the clot busting med medication that can goes in their veins and goes up to this clot in their brain and breaks it up and restores blood flow. It's an amazing medication. I have seen people just turn right around with some TPA, but the trade-off is it makes you bleed it really increases your risk of bleeding. So we want to assess where they're at in the first place with their platelets because if they're already low, we can't thin their blood anymore because we're gonna have another big problem on our hands. So the cutoff for TPA is the their platelets, they can't be less than 100,000 or 100. So that's, that's the cutoff, okay, if they come in with a 98, 95, 68, or whatever, they're not, they cannot get TPA. Now, just because it's less than 100 doesn't mean it's another reason to freak out. Um, we, we don't get worried, really, unless it's less than uh, 50,000. So that would be the critical lab result that lab's calling you for. They're not going to call you for a 95, a 98, something like that. That's just going to keep them from getting TPA. So naturally, we also want to know the other coagulation 
uh, levels that they're at. So a lot of patients that have ischemic strokes are at high risk for strokes in the first place. That means this patient maybe in the past has had a pulmonary embolism, a DVT, valvular heart disease. Uh, maybe they have a mechanical valve or they've had emboli in the past. And a lot of these patients are put on blood thinners. Well, just because you're put on a blood thinner doesn't mean that it's going to totally take away your risk of stroke. It's going to lower it, but it's not going to take it away. Therefore, a lot of these patients are on Coumadin. And the way we assess how the Coumadin is, is with a PTINR. Different um, disease processes require different therapeutic levels of the INR. So the higher the INR is, the thinner the blood is. We want it thinner than normal, but we don't want it too thin. So a normal INR, and actually let me just tell you the PT, PT stands for prothrombin time. And then the INR is the international normal. Ratio. Okay, so a normal, someone not on a blood thinner, less than two. Whoop, less than two. But let's say someone is on Coumadin for a pulmonary embolism or some other reason there. I'm sorry, the reasons for this two to three range is a PE. Someone has a history of a DVT. Valvular heart disease, or history of a venous thrombosis, um, or a venous thrombus. So then the next uh, little bit higher of a therapeutic goal is a 2.5 to 3.5, and that's getting pretty thin. And the only reason we want it that thin, there's only two reasons here, a mechanical heart valve obviously do heart valve, and then uh, systemic embolisms. So those are pretty serious conditions. So we want to have their blood a little bit thinner. We don't want blood um, gooping up on that valve and breaking off and going to their brain. So these are our three. The two, less than two is normal. Two to three is therapeutic for a patient on Coumadin with these conditions, and then 2.5 to 3.5 is therapeutic for someone on these conditions. So let's say we assess it, and someone has a mechanical heart valve, and they come in, and their INR is 1.1. Well, I think we figured out why we got a stroke on our hands. So their blood is not thin enough for the condition that they have, and it's not at a therapeutic range for that medication. So that's really important to know. The other... Um, part of this is the PTT. It's also called the APTT. So the partial thromboplastin time or activated partial thromboplastin time. Basically, this is the bleeding time. We want to see, we take some of their blood, we throw a little chemical on it, and then we see how quick it clots. So the normal, normal is, sorry here, is 25 to 35 seconds. So that's normal. And that doesn't really look like a three. There you go. <laughs> 25 to 35 seconds. So that's normal. And if we've got an increased bleeding time, we're going to be a little concerned, a little more concerned, or potentially not giving that TPA, that very necessary medication. So those, those are our labs that we're going to look in depth on on a stroke patient that's presenting with a stroke. While other labs might be ordered, these are the focus, focal points for a patient presenting with an ischemic stroke.